Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Alhamdulillah. In the previous video I have explained to you how we are going to recreate a contemporary uh, civilization based on spirituality which can be developed by Muslims throughout the world of how we create a contemplative lifestyle knowing who we are, our purpose in life and seeking a balance in lifestyle at our SEMP level that means spiritual, emotional, mental and physical level and try to create a loving, caring, peaceful, just world for all humanity and all Allah's creature on this earth so how are we going to reflect on this nature of our existence uh, there's a lot of uh, material as I say written by our scholars in the past that we can refer back because Islam is the most profound religion in terms of the understanding of our spirituality and our reality as a human being and how we are going to understand the philosophical framework and the sociological and psychological framework of Islamic psychology. So I'm going to give you some idea of how and because this is written extensively in many of our uh, writings of our great scholars of the past and even in the present that this nature of the nothingness of man, all right? This nothingness of man has been described philosophically that we are not to be arrogant because in reality we are a creature of nothingness. We have nothing to be proud of, nothing to be, uh, to be so arrogant about. That is the quality of Iblis. He denied the grandeur of Allah. When Allah created Adam, he says, I am better than him, so why should I uh, pay respect to him? to Adam. So this is where modern man is also living in a very, very uh, proudful, arrogant way of life, trying to change things, whereas in reality, the things that we do are just so insign insignificant to the reality of the Absolute, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to understand our philosophical framework huh? that man, humankind, this species, Homo sapiens, is a non-existent creature, not even mentioned for a long time. In the Quran, Allah tells us about this idea that we are a creature that's not even mentioned for a long time. That means from the nothingness of our physical plane, our physical existence, our physical body, we are nothing. All right? But we existed in the realm of Azali and with the covenant of with, uh, uh, and covenant with Allah, the primordial realm of the garden in Jannah. This is where we have the first understanding of our existence in the spiritual realm. So this is the spiritual aspect, the S-E-M aspect. Here we are talking about the P aspect. So there is a dichotomy between the spiritual, emotional, mental, pre-existent reality versus the physical reality that is all right, prevalent or that is uh, the, the common factor as our existence in the physical plane. But when we die, all right, descent and the realm of dunya. That means we, we descend from the realm of dunya, we leave this physical world, then there is separation. And when there is separation, we return and ascend to the realm of the Creator, Baraza, uh, Jannah, Jahannam, and all the six stages or seven stages, as the various scholars have mentioned, of our journey in the realm of the hereafter. So, this whole idea is a philosophical framework not in theory, but in reality. That means our worldview for Islamic psychology must be based on this worldview because we cannot take it in any other way. So I just like to refer a few paragraphs from our great scholar, all right, Prolegomena to the Metaphysics of Islam and an exposition of the fundamental elements of the worldview of Islam. This is by our great scholar, still alive, old man. Said Muhammad Nakib Al Atas, founder, director of Islamic Institute of uh, the International Institute of Islamic Thought and Civilization, is tech in Malaysia, and is holder of the distinguished Al Ghazali Chair of Islamic Thoughts. So this is the man, a profoundly wonderful, knowledgeable scholar of Islam. And what does he say? Just to quote a few 
paragraphs from his book, probably Gomena. All right. The metaphysical vision of the world and of the ultimate reality envisaged in Islam is quite different from that projected by the statements and general conclusions of modern philosophy and science. We maintain that all knowledge of reality and of truth and the projection of a true vision of the ultimate nature of things is originally derived through the medium of his intuition. The intuition that we mean cannot simply be reduced to that which operated solely at the physical level of discussive reason based upon sense experience. For since we, we affirm in man the, position, the possession of physical as well as intellectual or spiritual powers and faculties which refer back to the spiritual entity, sometimes called intellect, or heart, or soul, or self, it follows that man, rational, imaginal, and empirical existence must involve both the physical and the spiritual realm. So here he explained the necessity for us to understand this nature. All right. So what is this nature in terms of the spiritual, emotional, and men mental realm, our SEM, that is existent when we have the covenant with Allah? This is mentioned further. The condition at Azali is that uh, where Allah tells us in the Quran, when thy Lord drew forth from the children of Adam, from their loins, their descendants, and made them to witness upon themselves, declaring, Am I not your Lord? They say, Yes, indeed, we do witness. This is Al Arif, Surah 7, verse 172. So Al Junaid explained this passage. In this, word, in this verse, Allah tells you that He spoke to them at a time when they did not exist except insofar as they exist for Him, that is for Allah. This existence is not the same type of existence as we usually attribute to Allah's creatures in the physical world. It is a type of existence which only Allah knows and only He alone is aware. All right? So basically, this existence gives us a meaning and purpose that separate us from the modern creature of nothingness. That means we are a creature of somethingness in the spiritual realm. That means Allah has elevated us to be His Khalifa on this earth because of that primordial covenant that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the realm of Azali that we can realize the grandeur, the greatness, the truth of the nature of the Creator. He created us as His Khalifa on this earth to realize Him and this whole understanding of realizing Allah at the spiritual level is a lifelong, lifelong process. It's not that today we reflect with tafakkur, we do murakaba, tomorrow we have, we know everything. This is the process of developing our knowledge, understanding the nature of our existence, and promoting a holistic, spiritual, contemporary realities based on the Quran and the Hadith, based on the Revelation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent upon our holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the beloved of Allah, and those who carry this message, the family, the tabi'in, the tabi tabi'in, the great imam scholars, uh, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Maliki, uh, the great scholars of Hujatul Islam, Imam Ghazali, and all the other scholars, Ibn al-Qayyim, and so on. So they have developed these whole sciences of understanding this reality, and we as we develop the framework for Islamic psychology, we have to retrace our step back to these great scholars and how we can merge their knowledge with the knowledge of the new sciences. For example, we have the knowledge of quantum physics, quantum mechanics. We have uh, the new knowledge of cosmology, of uh, astrophysics, and so many other knowledge, which we Muslims, our young scholars, our young scientists must master. Because when we master all these things, then we realize the grandeur of Allah, and then we have a fantastic, truthful, science-based Islamic psychology that is consonant with all the latest knowledge that is now profoundly exploding in the 21st and 22nd century. So we Muslims must be the forerunners of developing a holistic civilization based on the spirituality and the understanding of the nature, the psyche of man, based on Islamic psychology, based on the ancient knowledge, fusing it with science and technology and all the knowledge that we are 
now embracing today inshallah for those of you who wants to exercise your life be a person who seek knowledge and grow in knowledge because as you grow in knowledge you realize the grandeur and the greatness of Allah and you realize who you are why you are on this earth and where you are going to and you can separate yourself from the loneliness of nothingness that is prevalent in a secular atheistic lifestyle that brings self-destruction so we should be the Caliph of Allah always striving to be good helping others to be good and making the world good inshallah will understand the basis of how to develop a balanced perspective of Islamic psychology that's your job brothers and sisters I'm just giving you some ideas inshallah we'll see you in the next video